untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono black discard deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring Tiny Bones Trinket Thief as our commander, a 2 mana 1 2 skeleton rogue, saying at the beginning of each end step, if an opponent discarded a card this turn, we get to draw a card and lose one life. So Tiny Bones rewards us for making the opponent discard cards by giving us extra card advantage. And then for 6 mana, each opponent with no cards in hand loses 10 life. So in the late game, once the opponent is empty handed, we can also use Tiny Bones as a win condition. So Tiny Bones synergizes quite nicely with any 1 mana discard effects, since we can potentially wait until turn 3 to play our 1 mana discard effect and play Tiny Bones in the same turn, so we get to make sure that we get to draw an extra card of Tiny Bones and maybe take away a removal spell from the opponent so they can't take out our commander. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At 1 mana we also have some cheap removal with Blood Chief's Thirst that can also be kicked to take out larger creatures or planeswalkers, as well as Fatal Push. And then we've got a whole host of 1 mana discard effects with Divest that can take a creature or artifact. The rest can take a non-creature non-land card. We've got Liliana's Steward that we can play and then at some point sacrifice to make the opponent discard a card of their choice. So we can play Steward on turn 1 and then turn 2 play Tiny Bones, activate Steward and get our extra card of Tiny Bones. And then of course Thought Seize that can take any non-land card at the cost of 2 life and Vicious Rumors that makes the opponent discard a card of their choice and also mills a card and deals one damage to them. And our final one drop is Cling to Dust, which is going to have plenty of targets thanks to all the discard effects and can potentially disrupt some graveyard synergies that the opponent has going on while drawing a card or gaining a life. Then at 2 mana we have more discard effects with Implement of Malice, can play it on turn 2, then turn 3 play Tiny Bones and Sacrifice Implement, make the opponent discard a card and then draw off Implement and Tiny Bones end of turn. We've got Acquisitions Expert and Burglar Rat, which enter the battlefield and make the opponent discard a card, so it can also provide a bit of sacrifice fodder to synergize with maybe our Phyrexian Tower to generate more mana in the late game. And then we've got a bunch of spot removal with Eliminate, Feed the Swarm can also take out enchantments, Heartless Act, and Grasp of Darkness, and then Pack Rat can be an interesting win condition in this deck, since in the late game we might still draw into more discard effects even though the opponent's already empty handed, but at least with Pack Rat we can put those cards to good use by discarding them and making additional copies of Pack Rat, and also has a tiny bit of synergy with our Burglar Rat. And then Waste Knot, also very synergistic, a 2 mana enchantment that either generates zombies, draws cards, or makes mana whenever the opponent discards a card of the corresponding type. And then Arcane Signet for a bit of ramp. Then at 3 mana we've got Davriel that can make the opponent discard cards, and if the opponent has 1 or fewer cards in hand at the beginning of their upkeep, Davriel will deal 2 damage to them, so it can also be a nice win condition. And if you get tired of Tiny Bones as your commander you can switch it out with Davriel with a few minor adjustments. We've got Inscription of Ruin, that is very flexible, can be used as removal, can make the opponent discard two cards or return a creature with converted mana cost two or less from our graveyard to the battlefield, so it can even get back our commander if we don't want to pay the commander tax, and for seven mana total we can kick it and choose all three modes potentially. We've got a Rotting Regisaur, which is kind of similar to Packrat, as we can potentially discard or discard effects in the late game if the opponent's already empty handed, and then we get a nice 7-6 creature that can close out the game quickly. Soul Shatter, a nice instant speed removal spell that also gets around hexproof. Murder Strider can also take out creatures or planeswalkers and gives us a 2 3 life linker afterwards. And Nixethid is also a card that rewards us for keeping the opponent with very few cards in hand, as it's a 7 7 that gets minus 1 minus 1 for each card in the opponent's hand. We've got Phyrexian Arena, which can draw us additional cards at the cost of 1 life each turn. Unburden can make the opponent discard 2, or we can cycle it for 2 mana to draw a card if the opponent's already empty handed. And then at 4 mana, Got Dread Presence, which rewards us for playing swamps by drawing cards or dealing 2 damage and gaining 2 life, and most of our mana base consists of swamps, so works nicely with our Dread Presence. Then we've got Fell Spectre, that when it enters a battlefield makes the opponent discard a card, and whenever an opponent discards a card, that player loses 2 life. Hagra Mauling can either be a tap land or a 4 mana removal spell. We've got a Liliana, Waker of the Dead, that can also plus 1 to make each player discard a card, and if an opponent cannot discard a card, they lose 3 life instead. Then the minus 3 is a nice removal effect, and the minus 7 can give us a game-winning emblem as well. 
And then Vraska's Contempt gives us a bit of exile based removal to get rid of creatures that maybe are more difficult to get rid of with traditional removal spells and can also get rid of Planeswalkers. We've got Phyrexian Obliterator as just a very powerful 4-drop that punishes the opponent for dealing damage to it. And then topping off our curve, Yogmal's Vile Offering, which is a legendary sorcery, so can only cast it if we control a legendary creature or planeswalker, so works nicely with our cheap 2-mana legendary commander, and then can destroy creature or planeswalker and return a creature or planeswalker from any graveyard to the battlefield under our control. And then we don't have a lot of stuff at 6 mana, since of course we can start activating Tiny Bones instead. Never to Return is actually more of a 3-drop, can destroy a creature or planeswalker, and then the return half, thanks to Aftermath, can be cast from our graveyard to make a 2-2 zombie and exile a card from a graveyard. And then Massacre Worm as our only sweeper effect, giving all opposing creatures minus 2, minus 2, and whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, that player loses 2 life. And then of course we can just start using our commander to close out the game. And then 22 swamps to go with our Dread Presence, make sure we can cast our Phyrexian Obliterator, and then Phyrexian Tower to synergize with some of our cheaper creatures, and cast Lochthwain as a nice card draw engine if we're empty handed. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Gishoth Sun's Avatar deck, and see yeah, our hand's probably keepable. Typically speaking, ramp decks are going to be difficult matchups, especially ones where the commander itself is kind of the win condition. We'll wait until turn 3 to fire off this Thoughtseize, I think. Or we could Tiny Bones on two, since a Gishoth deck is probably not going to have much removal. And then turn three we might unburden to make him discard two, we'll see. Uh, a Raptor. Could take out Raptor in a few different ways. I think I still like making them discard. And we'll go with unburden. And then next turn we can maybe Thought Seize plus use a removal spell. Alright. Knight of the Stampede, pretty good target for removal. Tramp Jaw Tyrant, Garrick's Uprising. I think we'll go with the Tyrant. And we'll use a Sorcery Speed removal spell. Inscription can also take out Marauding Raptor potentially. Alright, so we've got a few options. I also don't hate just playing Regisar here to start applying a bit of pressure. And then next turn we can continue our quest of making the opponent discard or killing their things. Or inscription can get one card. Now let's let's register. Can maybe even wait for a kicked inscription at some point. Soul Shatter. Soul Shatter being instant speed removal can also be very nice for taking out Gishoth. For now, I guess we can Murder Strider. Attack. And then maybe Inscription to just make him discard too. They might have some expensive cards in hand that they couldn't cast. Zakama and Goring Ceratops. Opponent's down to 15, and explodes. Only 4 mana, the ramp plan didn't quite work out since it relied on creatures which we could luckily take out. If the ramp was lands based we might have had a harder time. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Galia of the Endless Dance deck. So presumably an aggressive red-green deck. So, I don't love the fact that we don't have any early plays, but I do love the fact that we have Phyrexian Obliterator, which is going to be great against any red-green aggro deck. And yeah, I think we can keep this. 
Turn two, maybe Pankrat. Turn three, we can make a copy, discarding one of our more expensive cards. And if we find a discard effect, we can maybe still run out Tiny Bones. We'll see. Alright, opponent does not run out their commander. Yeah, I'll pack rats if they have a removal spell here, that's okay. Way to play Tiny Bones until we can play a discard spell on the same turn. And the more time we get here, the more likely we are to play Obliterator. And it's going to be a Lightning Strike taking out Packrat. Dread Presence is also more of a 5-drop since we ideally want to play it and play Swamp in the same turn. Because I'll do Mammoth and there's Divest, perfect. So Divest plus Tiny Bones. Take a Hellrider, opponent's got Nissa, a Braid, Recovery in hand. So no real answers for Obliterator. Braid takes out Tiny Bones, that's fine. I'll gladly take five. And we'll see how they can handle the 5-5 five five Horror with Trample. And some other text that's pretty relevant. And yeah. Red-green just doesn't have an easy way of beating it. Sometimes you might see like a Death Touch creature like Questing Beast equipped with Ember Cleave to go over the top, but of course in a singleton format my opponent's not very likely to find those cards. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Vivictus, Asmadi, Junt deck, and yeah, our hand seems fine. Can Fatal push an early mana creature maybe, and then turn 3 play Tiny Bones plus Divest. So we'll wait on the Divest here. Yeah, I'll still probably pass. Domri, sadly, I cannot take out easily. And then Tiny Bones into Divest. Maybe next turn Waste Knot plus Acquisitions Expert. Take a Corvold. Opponent's holding a bunch of removal. Including ways to destroy my enchantments. But yeah, they can just play Vevictus now. Although we can take it out with Heartless Act. It's gonna, hurt, yeah. it's gonna be Wolf Willow Haven. Plus a Maelstrom Pulse instead. Alright, I guess I could Waste Knot plus Duress, or I guess Duress first, but then... Yeah, I guess they can still Assassin's Trophy my castle. If I go Waste Knot into Duress, they would just Trophy my Waste Knot in response. I guess... That's still okay since it ramps me. Or I can play Acquisitions Experts and then have a way to pressure Domri at the very least. And they're actually gonna trophy my castle anyway. So it doesn't ramp me, but at least we get to keep our Waste Knot for later. Right, there's Vevictus with haste potentially. Thanks to Riot from Domri. Alright. Waste not gone. And then we get a rotting registry return. Pretty good deal. And probably get rid of Either Fatal Push or Duress is what I'm thinking. Let's go with Fatal Push. 
And then Thirst can also take out Domri, or we can just attack him. And then... I can duress Heartless Act. Just to make sure. Or we can keep the rest in hand to discard with Regisaur. Alright, well, that worked out. Now my opponent concedes. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Sir Allen White Aggro deck. Well, this hand's not the best against white aggro since we're missing removal spells, but I think I'm still going to keep it. And then hopefully draw into a bunch of spot removal here. Turn 2. Can probably get away with tiny bones. Don't expect too much removal. Maybe like a baffling end or glass casket, but... It's not super likely for the point to have it. And then we get to maybe play Davriel instead of... Uh, Something else. Right, it's going to be a turn to Daxos. So, if we play Davriel, we only get one activation out of it. So, how about we implement Sacrifice instead? And then next turn, Fell Spectre into maybe Unburden the turn after? Or I could Unburden now. Although, I kind of want to draw cards. And make the opponent discard one as opposed to make him discard two, since we're pretty desperate to find some interaction. Alright. Can take out a creature. Opponent discards an Elspeth, a Sun's Nemesis, which they can eventually escape out of the graveyard, and another removal spell with Eliminate. Alright, so we've got a lot of interaction now. Should keep us alive, although we might still play the Spectre first. Mall of the Skyclaves, gonna give Daxos plus two plus two flying in first strike. So pretty juicy targets for a removal spell. So I guess I could feed the swarm Daxos and keep up eliminates. Or we could still play Fell Spectre, take an extra hit from Daxos, and that's probably okay. Yeah, our opponent's gonna run out of cards pretty quickly. And we seem to have the interaction required to stay alive now. Nahiri's binding on Tiny Bone, so we won't be able to use the activated ability. Although I can always decide to destroy the binding with my Feed the Swarm. And then for now, kind of like Davriel, make them discard and then keep up Eliminates. Maybe I should just kill Daxos now in case they draw a protection spell. But this gives them less information to work with. And this way they can move them all if that's their plan. Cartouche on the Hawk, that's fine. I guess I could have killed Daxos in response now, since I didn't have the mana to move them all afterwards. Alright, so we've got 6 mana. Cannot activate Tiny Bones because of Binding. So, is it time to play Arena plus Nixothid? They can equip Maul to the Token or the Hawk to start attacking. But that seems fine. And yeah, my opponent's just seen enough here. They're pretty far behind with no cards versus 6 cards in hand and still a lot of stuff we can do. And even if Sir Allen shows up, I'm sure we can find plenty of answers for him as well. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the play, facing a Captain Cissé deck. Yeah, my hand's okay. We've got plenty of removal for Captain, which is what matters in this matchup. I'll hang on to Vicious Rumors till we play Tiny Bones first. And I don't expect the Captain deck to have a ton of cheap removal here. Frankston Tower could be a little awkward if we want to cast Grasp and Rumors in the same turn. But we can just Heartless Act and Rumors instead. Alright, so we'll kick things off with a Rumors. And then I think I just play land and pass. That way if they play captain, I can try and kill it end of turn. And if they have a way to protect it, I can untap and kill it again. Or just play Nixothid. Ah, there's a captain. didn't have a protection spell. So now we can just play Nixothid. Cling to dust. Can get rid of a Johnny to draw a card. Humility brings perspective. And Unburden. Yeah, don't mind if I do. Get our value from Tiny Bones while we can. Implements more discard effects. So I like where this is going. If they ramp into a big planeswalker, we've got it cover with never. And there's a Johnny unyielding. So can exile tiny bones or can draw some cards. Exile's tiny bones. Leave no one behind. So kill a Johnny, play implements. We must regroup. And then next turn I can play tiny bones, activate implement potentially. If their plan is to replay Captain, we can Heartless Act it. Alright, so... I've got a few options. I think just kill Captain, play Nixothid is fine. And then next turn we can maybe Tiny Bones discard. Gonna be in elves, so bonus empty handed, so we can't get value from our tiny bones as much. But it does mean we've got a bigger Nixothid. So hit for seven. So let's see how much mana does this cost? Eight, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So even if I kill a mana creature here, they will still be able to replay Captain next turn. So I might have to cling to dust in the hopes of finding more removal, since we need to find more answers for Captain, which is otherwise going to take over the game. So I think we main phase cling. Sadly, I have to get rid of my Never to Return. Alternatively, I can just cast Divest with nothing just to keep Return in the graveyard. Yeah, that's probably okay. 
So we'll just divest on nothing. Or I could have sacked Implement, I guess. Just to draw a card. That's probably better. And then cling to dust. A Johnny. Alright, and then implement we can only use at sorcery speed. So yeah, I guess we'll just do it now. And just hope to draw more removal. We did, Hagra Mauling, perfect. So now, if they replay Captain, we can answer it. So I guess we didn't really get punished for the awkward sequencing. Attack for seven. Point on chumps with a goose. Mauling the captain. And now I kind of like taking out the mana creature, making it more difficult for them to replay Captain once again. So it's now a 10 mana Captain. Ooh, great hench. It's potentially scary, although that will make it more likely that the opponent has cards stuck in hand, we can make them discard. A Dread Presence to draw. So we can hit for 7. And then do I want to replay Tiny Bones? I mean, my opponent's empty-handed, so Tiny Bones can just win us the game. Play Steward, and then next turn we can empty their hand with Acquisitions Expert, maybe. So even if they replay Captain thanks to the extra mana from Henge, they could still be in trouble. Alright, taps out for Captain. But they have to draw a card. So how do we want to do this? I can activate Steward. Attack with Nyxothid, they'll have to chump. Otherwise they're dead to Tiny Bones. Now I could put them to 5, but I should probably just take out Captain. How many times have we killed Captain? I've lost track. And played Red Presence. And then we still have Acquisitions Expert to get our last card. And close out the game. Lyra Dombringer. Yeah, it's not a bad card. Their opponent's empty-handed. Can attack with Nyxothid, which will force a Chum block. Could draw a card first here. Opponent takes it. And Tiny Bones can close out the game. Alright, sweet. That was a very grindy game against the Captain Cissé deck. But yeah, we had a ton of spot removal to keep Captain at bay, prevent them from getting a ton of card advantage and assembling any combos. So yeah, the Tiny Bones discard deck is a pretty interesting one. Kind of plays like a control deck, but also lets you control the opponent's hand size. And then Tiny Bones is an excellent way to close out the game as well. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.